condition and use autogens to find out the required results. So here we have a practice problem in which a pump station is designed to supply water to a linen factory. The factory is situated at an elevation of 58 meters. So we have a linen factory as you can see here and it is situated at an elevation of 58 meters. The factory draws water from a tank circular in shape with diameter of 10 meters. Its base elevation is 90 meters. Minimum water elevation is 99 meters. Initial water elevation is 105.5 and maximum water elevation is 106.5. So the minimum water elevation is 99 meters and the base elevation is 90 meters. So this means that at a particular time uh, the water level in the tank should be at least 9 meter. This is the meaning of this minimum water elevation. Now to distribute water to supply the water to, to this linen factory three main parallel pumps have been provided pump 1, 2 and 3 which draw water from a nearby pond so this is a pond which is from which the water is being collected and it is distributed to the linen factory through these pumps and stored, water is stored in the tank. Out of the three pumps, two pumps are set aside for everyday usage and the third one is for emergency purposes. So two pumps are for everyday usage and the third one is for emergency purpose. Each pump will work with a set of controls that ensure that it will run only when the water level in tank reaches a certain level. So this line means that the some conditions and controls have been applied to these pumps according to the water level in the tank. Like if this much water level is in the tank then only this pump will work or then only this pump will work. So of course when the water level in the tank is below some uh, level or some point then and one of the pumps will start. So this I will explain to you in the next slide. So for this situation some data has been given. So we have a pond, three pumps, one tank and one factory. So the factory is the last stop which, to which the water has to be supplied and this will now act as a junction. Why junction? Because we know in the water gems that junction is uh, the variable and the input parameter for junction is its demand. So junction is basically the point where we want to supply the water and it has a particular demand. This is the tank. These are the pumps. These are the various pipes connecting these tanks, uh, these uh, elements. And this is the pond which is actually the reservoir. So this is some pipe information that is the length of the different pipes. We have seven pipes here, their diameters, their material, their roughness factors. Also we have some pump information. So in the pump information we have been given its elevations and also their head corresponding to the flow levels. Uh, this part you have already done in the previous building networks, in the previous networks. Now, the various control conditions have been specified here, like, uh, like I just explained to you. That this means that pump 1 will operate, that it will become on only when the tank 1 is below 105.5 meters. This means when the water when the water level in the tank reaches below this elevation, then pump one will automatically sw get switched on. 
but when the water level is above 106 meters then it will be off so similarly such conditions have been provided for pump 1 2 as well as 3 so we will learn how to use these conditions now now what we have to do is first of all you have we have to model this network in water gems then we have to analyze then we have been asked these three questions the first question is that can the pumping station support the factory's 20 liter per second demand for 24 hour period that means for the various input conditions which have been given to us here and here and all of these conditions based on these conditions if the demand of the factory is 20 liters per second can all the uh, can this water distribution network supply this much demand that is 20 liter per second or not so first question is this second question is that if there is a fire breakout which requires an additional water demand of this much for 0 to 6 hours would the system be adequate with the pump controls given okay so we have to give the eps report that is extended period simulation for 0 to 6 hours now the last question is how might the system be operated so that the fire flow requirement will be met so this question means that if uh, the fire flow requirement is not being met from the pump control conditions given in our question then how can we uh, how can we meet this flow require flow requirement so first of all what we will do is we will just model this in water gems then we will input all these values which are given here in the question and all these pipe information the tank elevations pump elevations etc and also these control conditions then we will analyze step by step first we will analyze for a fixed demand of 20 liter per second then we will uh, create an additional demand of 108 liter per second for 6 hours and then we, we will check whether our system is adequate or not then if the system is not adequate we will suggest a solution so let's begin and create a new project so we will be using the we will be applying all the lessons which we have learned in the previous lectures So now my new project is open. So first I will check my units. So I go to tools, options and units. Okay, so I will reset to defaults although it is already as a unit. So okay. Now I will assign a title. So this is tutorial. real one okay so let's begin so first we look at our network so we will draw this network so in water gems the pond will is represented as reservoir the these three pumps are pumps this is tank and this is lean factory so the factory is represented by a junction and all of these are connected by pipes so note here I will uh, try, I will model my network in such a way that the numbering of the pipes and the pump is same as given here because uh, this is because these pipes have been numbered and they have been assigned different properties. So it will be easier to follow this nomenclature only. So first of all I will start with the reservoir 
so go to user border so this is my user border then this user border is connected to three pumps so this is a pump so i will draw three pumps okay so So these are the three pumps. There is no issue. I can rename these pumps. So there is no problem if this is pump 2, 3 or 4. Next we have a tank here. Somewhere here. Okay. Now I will connect these with the help of pipes. So pipe 1 is from reservoir to the pump 2. Then pipe 2 is from the reservoir to pump 3. So I will join in the same way. So reservoir and pump 3. Pipe number 1. Reservoir and this. Next we have pump 4, 5 and 6. So I will just adjust my network. After this we have another pipe and here we have the linen factory. So the factory is junction 1. Now I will rename these all according to our network here. So I will call the reservoir now the pond and the junction as the linen factory and these as pump 1, pump 2 and pump 3 and this as the tank. So I will just double click on reservoir and label it as pond. This is Pump 1, Pump 2, Pump 3. This is my tank. And this junction is the end factory. So I will adjust these according to my requirement. This is tank, this is pipe 7, this is the linen factory. So I have, we have modeled now the water distribution system. Now what we will do is we will assign individual properties. So for this we have to see the question. So first of all I will start with the pond. So the pond is a reservoir. So here we it is written that nearby pond has an elevation of 58 meters. So I will double click on the pond and change its physical property of elevation to 58 meters. The rest of the properties, we are not concerned about those. After that, I will assign property input properties of the tank. So the tank is circular in shape with diameter 10 meter, base elevation 90, minimum water elevation 99, 
initial water elevation this much and maximum water elevation this much. So I will click on the tank and first of all I will choose its section as circular so it is already circular and diameter as 10 meters. Its base elevation was 90, minimum elevation was 99, initial elevation was 105.5 and maximum elevation was 106.5. Right. Now we have the linen factory. The linen factory has an elevation of 58 meters. Elevation of 58 meters. Now what we will do is, now we will assign the input data to other individual elements so first of all i will start from pump one again so pump one for the pump one we have to open this table because this is all the pump information so the pump elevate information is its elevation head and flow so you must recall here that when we are we and when, when we are assigning property the, to the pump we have to input its elevation which is 57 meter and then the pump definition so go on the pump definition and click on edit pump definitions and create a new pump definition so i'm Renaming this first pump definition as pump 1 and pump 2. Why I am giving this the title as pump 1 and pump 2? Because if you see here, the pump 1 and pump 2 are having same elevation, same heads and same flow. And also in the problem statement, it is written that out of the three pumps, two pumps are set aside for everyday usage. So these two pumps will have same working. So I am giving them the same pump definition because we don't need to repeat again and again. So now pump definition type is selected as standard three point. Then I open my pump information and And I input these values. So for zero flow, the head is 63 meters. So zero flow head is 63. 58.5 flow head is 32. And for 78 flow head is zero. So here automatically a graph gets plotted between the flow and head. So close. So now I have defined my pump 1. Now I will go to pump 2. So pump 2 has an elevation of 57 meters. And now I don't need to define its pump definition again. I will just select pump 1 and 1, 2. And as you can see it automatically uh, input the values which I had defined earlier because pump 1 and pump 2 are having same values. Then we go to pump 3. Its elevation is also 57 meter but its other values are different. So as you can see these three values are different from these. So we will have to create another pump definition. So now I will create another pump definition and rename as P3. Again we will input these values. So for a flow of 0, the head is 63, 50.3, 32. 50.3, 50 
32 and the last is 670. So this is for pump 3. So select pump 3 from here. I have forgotten to assign pump definition to pump 1. So don't forget to assign the pump definition after defining it. Okay, so these are all the pump definitions. Now, we will learn how to give these controls. So first of all, you must learn the meaning of what does this control means. So this means that this line means that pump 1 will get automatically on when the tank level is below 105.5 meter. It will automatically gets off, get off when tank level is above 106. For pump 2 to be on, tank level is below 105.2 and off when tank 1 is above 106. So similarly for tank th pump 3 also. So it is quite clear to you that pump will work when the water level is low. So we have to give the con these six controls for the tank level to individual pump. So how to do that? It is very simple and interesting. So for that, we go to the components here at the top and click on controls. So this will controls tab will open up. So first of all, we will assign the conditions. So what are the different conditions? So first create new. So this is new simple condition. So what is our condition? So our condition is that the tank level should be this much. So there are, if I again open that table, there are six conditions for tank elevations, sorry, tank level elevations. So first, these are the three, six conditions and the consequent actions are on, off, on, off, on, off. So we have six actions and six conditions. So first of all, I will have to select the element for defining by condition. So for this, click on this ellipsis here and select the tank because we are setting the control according to the tank elevation too. So click on the tank. Okay, so now here you can see that the first condition is that tank hydraulic grade is less than zero. So we can change the operator to less, less than, equal to, less than or greater than, equal to, greater than, so according to our situation. So now we will start defining these conditions. So first condition is tank 1 is below 105.5. Second is tank 1 is above 106. So tank 1 is below means less than and above means greater than. So it is. 105.5 so this is our first condition now again new next condition again we will select the tank next condition is that the tank level is greater than 106 then the third is tank level is below 105.2 above 106 so this condition is repeated so we don't need to define it twice okay so in total we have five conditions this second third fourth fifth this condition and this condition is same so we don't need to define it twice So new condition, again select tank less than 
5.2 then next condition select tank and the condition is less than 99.25 greater than 103 so less than 99.25 and next greater than 103 so we have total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 conditions. Although here we have 6 conditions but this and this condition is same. So we don't need to define it again and again. So now we have defined the base conditions. Now what are the consequent actions? So consequent actions are of 6 types. Pump 1 on, pump 1 off. Pump 2 on, pump 2 off. Pump 3 on pump 3 off so we have to define these three actions here so again go to new action simple so first we had selected this condition tab now we have selected this action tab so now we have to give the action to pump 1 so again select this ellipsis and select pump 1 so it will automatically get pump attribute as pump status equal to on or off. So one condition is on, another is pump one is off. So again new and here you can now element has already been selected once pump one. So it is given the pump one in the drop down list. So pump one, pump status off. So for pump one we have two actions on or off. Then next is, so we have to select pump 2 now and pump 2 is not in the drop list as of now. So again select this ellipsis and select pump 2. So pump 2 is on, next condition is pump 2 is off, off. Fifth condition is we have to now select pump 3 on. And sixth condition, last condition is pump 3 off. So we have six conditions. Sorry, six actions. So we have five conditions and six actions. Now what are the controls? So click on now this controls tab. And click on new. So it is very simple. This is a statement that if our tank elevation is less than 105.5 then my pump 1 will be on so basically we are writing this statement in the form of operators now so if tank is below 105.5 then pump 1 will be on so i have just selected here out of all the conditions which we defined we have defined these five conditions so select the first condition and select the con uh, consequent action so consequent action is that pump one will become on so this is the first control now the second control is if my tank grade is greater than 106 then what was the condition then pump one will be off third condition tank level is less than 105.2 then pump 2 was on okay I'm just writing it from here okay when tank level is below 105.2 pump 2 is on okay fourth condition when tank level is again 106 then pump 2 will become off next condition when it is less than 99.25 pump 3 will become on and last is when it is greater than 103 then pump 3 will become off okay so these are the six conditions six controls now one two three four five six 
okay so these controls have now been set for all these pumps according to the tank elevation so i will close it now what are we left with we have assigned the property to reservoir to the pumps to the tank and also to the linen factory now we will input all the values of the pump so sorry not the pump the pipes so these are the seven pipes so one way is then click on each pipe and input the values individually but but now we have learned what agents that we can say that it is a bit difficult task so what we will do is we will just use the flex table directly so go to flex tables and pipe table okay so the first information which we have been given is the length of these pipes so you can see here that water gems has also calculated the length 15 18 17 but these are scaled according to the scale set in water gems but when we have been given the length actual length then we have to input that length only so this means we have a user defined length so i will click on all these because we have been given all the lengths so click on all these and what are these lengths so pipe 1 has a length of so pipe 1 to pipe 3 are 6 meter long pipe 4 is 71 then 72 73 and 18 6 6 6 18 so these are the user defined lengths next is the diameter okay so now i will use the global edit option which we have already studied so the diameter is given as 150 so i will not input individually i will just select the diameter and right click and go to global edit operation is set because i want to set the value to 150 okay so all the diameters are 150 except one so you can change one manually okay next is the material so the material is cast iron so again global edit value is cast iron okay so automatically it will select it will edit cast iron for all and last is the roughness factor which is 90 so which is also called the hazen William constant so again global edit set value as 90 okay so this is how the pipe information is input so i will close the pipe table so now you can see that we have defined all the pumps and this sign here means that we have provided control conditions to individual pumps for pump 1 also 2 also and 3 also so i have now input all the information so i will go to the first question can the pumping station support the factory's 20 liter per second demand for 24 hour period so what i will do is i will so this means that factory has now a demand of 20 liter per second so i will double click on the factory and set its demand to 20 liter per second okay so now we will analyze according to this whether our system is fine or not so i will just run this so for running this go to compute this green arrow here and water gem will start the analysis and give us the result okay so here now you can see the direction of flow these arrows were not present earlier but now after 
analysis these arrows have been shown so if i click on pump 6 sorry pipe 6 as example so you can see the results here now the flow the velocity head loss gradient etc these were not present before okay so what for example uh, i want to uh, examine the flow through the system over a 24 hour period right this has been stated in the question so how to do that go to analysis and calculation options and base calculation options select the time analysis type to eps because extended period simulation is for a period of time and steady state is for a particular time so in the question it has been written that whether that demand can be met for 24 hours or not so i will select eps for duration of 24 hours with the hydraulic step of one hour means the result will come for each hour so i will close this and again compute and here you can see there is no error coming so this means that our network is okay so the answer to the first question can be checked that in the first question was whether 20 liter per second demand of linen factory is being met by the system for a period of 24 hours so it can be uh, checked like this although we have not got any error so go to linen factory junction okay click on the select just select the linen factory junction go to graphs and create a line series graph from the new button now select the pressure tab from here pressure box in the graph series options and close this option window so you will see a calculated pressure at the linen factory so this pressure has never reached zero as you can see it is always above if i see the data it is always 470 okay so uh, this means that our pressure has not dropped that means the demand has been met in the linen factory okay so you can see the pressure is constant throughout so i can also see the hydraulic grid okay so this means that our 20 liter per second demand has been met by this water distribution network now we move on to the next question so, so the, the next question was if there were a fire breakout that required an additional 108 liter per second water for 0 to 6 hours would the system be adequate with the pump controls given or not so what we will do for this the second demand of 108 liter per second right now close this go to analysis and calculation options go to base calculation option now we have been asked that what will happen from 0 to 6 hours so here duration will be 6 so 0 is 12 a.m. so from 0 to 6 hours what will be the result so I will click on compute and you can see that there is some error coming so this means that our demand is not being met okay so this will create problem hence 
this means that when we are uh, doing the analysis for 108 liter per second demand for 6 hours then this distribution network won't work right again you can blow in series graph and tick this level calculated button and click ok and as you can see here that the level has dropped at 3 hours this means that our level had to be minimum 9 meters but just after 3 hours it has dropped to 9 meters so that will create problem for our system so this means the answer to the second question is that uh, that if there is very fire in the factory, the existing system would not be adequate. Now the third question is, how might the system be operated so that the fire flow requirement will be met? So, how can we help this system? Right now, our only pump 1 and pump 2 are working because we have used these two for our everyday usage. Pump 3 is inactive. This is just for emergency. So, what we can do is, pump 3 can be manually switched on at the beginning of the fire to supply the flow necessary to fight the fire at the linen factory. Okay, and for doing this, what we will do is, we will delete the pump controls for pump 3 and then the, then the pump 3 will always be on during the model simulation. So, when we have deleted its control, then it will be always on and the demand will be met by the pump 3. So let us try that. Go to components and controls and we will delete the pump 3 condition. Okay, we will delete the pump 3 controls, this and this. So this means that our pump will be always on. So again click on compute and yes our this is successful. Now there is for 6 hours the demand is demand of 108 liter per second is being met. Okay. So this means that our result our problem is being the solution to this problem has been is being working.